This is the second lecture of chapter 6 where we're looking at control volumes. So, in practical application, the types of problems we're going to be solving are many times what we call steady, or they're steady flow problems, where we have a certain amount of mass that comes in, and that same amount of mass that comes in comes out. Likewise, the energy that's transferred or the energy in this system also remains constant. So nothing is changing with time in this case. And it doesn't matter how many inputs or exits we have as long as we don't have accumulation in this system. So whatever comes in comes out th through these two ports over here. We consider that a steady process. Now, Steady processes are the norm for things like power plants. So in power plants, you're going to be having um, systems that operate for months and operate for extended periods of time and have uh, a steady operating condition. They're not shut down for long periods of time and operate basically at these types of conditions. Now under steady conditions like we talked about in the, our last lecture, the mass flow rate that's coming in is the same as the mass flow rate that's coming out. Whenever we have, like here we have uh, the, some type of uh, heater, uh, we have a uh, mass flow rate that's coming in it has to equal the mass flow rate that's coming out if it's in steady operation. Likewise, the energy balance of this system since it's not changing with time the energy in would be the same as what's coming out or we could write our first law of thermodynamics for an open system as the amount of uh, Q that's coming in work that's coming in and our changing our energy of the system for each inlet is equal to the amount of energy uh, at the exit as well So in this, in, there are several cases that we're going to be looking at. Uh, this slide illustrates, again, just showing you the uh, different ways that we can write the conservation of energy. You know, a lot of times the kinetic and potential energies of our system are going to be negligible just because the values of these enthalpies are going to be very large. So these, this H2 and H1 are going to be so much larger a lot of times than our kinetic or potential energies that we usually just ignore those values. Now that's not always the case. So for nozzles or diffusers, we may have to take those values into account, specifically the kinetic energy, which can be very large if the velocities are high. Another note to make on this slide is that even though you guys may see, um, if you simplify your units, you may see meter squared per second squared. So for like example here, uh, in our kinetic energy term, we have meter squared per second squared. And you may think, well, I can't add that to joule uh, per kilogram over here. But as far as units are concerned, meter squared per second squared and joules per kilogram are the same. And this goes through and shows you how they are in fact the same. Let's give, let me give you some examples here over the next couple slides over uh, some steady flow devices. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with what a turbine is, a turbine is something that we're going to be talking about uh, in some examples. and. It, they are primarily what's used, one, for aviation transportation and also for power generation. These turbines are used many times. So what, how these turbines work is there's a large air intake here and sometimes in aviation there'll be a fan that surrounds this but we have air basically that passes through our compressor section and you see this is a, uh, this is a several stage compressor that we have here. So air comes here, passes over these blades, and these blades act to increase the pressure of the air that's passing through it. Okay, so we really have a lot of compressed air that comes through here. The 
that compressed air then reaches the combustor, burns, and heat is released in this section. And those hot gases are then expelled through this turbine section. And those hot gases spin these turbines here at the exit of this uh, turbine. Uh, this spinning motion that is created here is used to generate, and we can hook up these blades to are connected to a shaft, and that shaft a lot of times is connected to a generator. Now that generator and some of that energy from that shaft spinning, can part of it can be used to run the compressor, and the other part of it can be used to generate electricity. And sometimes if you want to make use of the heat that's not used here, you can stick another uh, heat exchanger or steam turbine here to create uh, steam or to heat water uh, that will drive a steam turbine and that's called a combined cycle and those are used in power plants also to generate power. Now in power plants and many other applications, aviation also, you'll see nozzles and diffusers. Nozzle increases the velocity, decreases the pressure of our flow through the system. Diffuser does the opposite, decreases the uh, velocity of our system but increases the pressure. So these have opposite effects for different types of applications, both each having its own uh, unique use uh, in the field. Now if we're going to analyze these, a lot of these are analyzed on a steady basis. So if we look at these nozzles and diffusers, typically these are they can be small and typically the heat transfer and work done in them is zero. And you can see if we take the front point here and the exit point here, potential energy is also zero. But in these cases, we have to take into account, particularly because the velocities may be high, the kinetic energy. So we don't neglect those in these terms here. But a lot of times nozzles and diffusers are used in steady operation. And uh, we can make some other assumptions to simplify our analysis so that we can solve problems pretty quickly. Turbines and compressors, now I described those already, but essentially, and here's the definition, here we have turbines that help us to generate power uh, from the hot gases, the hot combustion gases that exit our combustor. And compressors are used to basically um, help increase the pressure or the flow rate of our uh, flow through our system. Now a fan is a lot like a compressor in that it increases the pressure of gas and it's used a lot of times to have if you have a very high flow rate with a low pressure drop application. A compressor is somewhere in between where we can run a moderate flow rate and have a overcome a moderate pressure drop and a pump you may hear also we describe a pump, but pumps are typically used to move liquids around instead of gases. We use a compressor or a fan to move gases around. Another idea is a heat exchanger. Now you may you heard me talk about combined cycles, and a heat exchanger can just be as simple as what you see up here on the top slot top of the slide, where we have a fluid passing through a pipe. So this may be um, a hot fluid. Okay, we have a hot fluid passing through this pipe and a cool fluid coming through B. Now, how we define heat exchangers is just that. We, they are devices that exchange heat between this hot and this cold fluid without mixing with one another. Okay, and uh, we can do several things so here we have a certain contact area we can bend this pipe increase that contact area but a lot of times these heat exchangers are steady flow devices also meaning that the water that's coming in and out of them the mass flow rate is conserved and also energy is conserved so the heat loss from this pipe is made up by the heat increase of the fluid that's coming in and out of this system
Okay, so energy and mass are conserved in a heat exchanger. Now, uh, same thing is applicable if, let's say, we look at just the pipe here in the heat exchanger. We may have, uh, we can do a similar analysis where we can look at a lot of times pipe flow is steady. And, you know, this is really breaking down this into a component level where we may have some type of flow as we inject fuel into the combustor, flow through our pipe, uh, may be operating probably is operating under steady conditions okay so the flow through the pipe and likewise we can look at one is there heat transfer in and out of this pipe that's coming in is there uh, are we adding it so here's like a blow dryer if we have a fan and we have a resistive element you know we have work being added into our system we have flow passing over uh, being moved by this fan so there's several applications of pipe and duct flow even just from the few applications that we've looked at there's several applications in industrial practice and uh, you know a lot of times you know people uh, these are such complicated systems and you guys really should appreciate them uh, for what they are it's really incredible that these type of systems can operate for months at a time without issue I mean you can see how many moving parts there are here in this system and how hot it is and how much power is being generated how fast these things are spinning and they don't fail so it's really incredible it's really an engineering feat that these uh, are able to operate like they do and I hope that you guys can appreciate some of these and now you have some insight into how these are analyzed um, in practice how these are analyzed you know and we're going to do some more problems here where we look at the analysis of these type of systems and we we a lot of times have to simplify it for a steady flow application and a lot of times that's very realistic for what exists out in the field not always I mean there's always of course always uh, exceptions but uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, a lot of applications of steady flow devices so let's work some problems from chapter 6 now